Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the improvements to smart rendering in the latest version of Premiere Pro. Smart rendering is the ability to use clips in your sequence that exactly match your sequence source, and if your final render also exactly matches the same codec and frame rate, instead of having to recompress and re export these clips, basically the data is just passed out to the final render. So, for those of you who have used Final Cut 7, you'll know that this is why. The exporting from Final Cut 7 is pretty quick. It's basically because it is taking the original clips and if there are no effects done, just passing them back out to the final QuickTime. So the same thing is now possible with QuickTime codecs in the new version of Premiere. So first of all, what I've done here is I've set up a sequence and this sequence is 1920 by 1080. If I look at the sequence settings, you'll see it's 1920 by 1080, 23976 set to custom. And the reason I set it to custom was so that I could use Apple ProRes 422 as my render codec. Now I'll come back to that in a minute and show you why I did that. But if I hit OK, you'll see that I have four clips in here and the sequence is exactly 60 seconds long. If I go to the end of it, one minute, there you go. So if I look at some of the media in my sequence, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to hit reveal in project and then I'm going to go to the original clip in the finder. So looking at it in QuickTime, you'll see that this clip is Apple ProRes 422, 1920 by 1080, 2398, same thing as 23976, and basically it's exactly matching my sequence settings here. So the good thing about this is now I can use the smart render capabilities. So if I hit Command M, and I want my final QuickTime to exactly match my sequence. So I'll just hit Match Sequence Setting, and you'll see it sets it to Apple ProRes 422, 1920 by 1080, 23976. And if I hit export, I'll just time this on my own. You'll notice it's going really quickly. So if I look at the final export time of this sequence, it's going to be fast. And it was just about nine seconds, which is really fast for a 60 second sequence. Now, that's great all in itself. The other cool thing is that you can now use your preview files in your final render. Now I know you could do this in the past, I know a lot of people had some troubles with this feature in Premiere Pro CS6 and before, but they've really taken it further here to where you can not only use your preview files, but you can use it with smart rendering. So let me show you how that works. Again I have the same sequence, but if I were to put effects on this clip, it would no longer be able to smart render it through because it's not able to pass that data out to the final render, it has to calculate what those effects look like. So I'm just going to select all my clips and I'll use paste attributes to paste some effects that I've already set up. If you look at what I have set up here, I have a fast color corrector, a directional blur, and a corner pin. And you could kind of see what each one of them is doing. Fast color corrector, directional blur, and corner pin. And I have that on each one of these clips. Obviously this is a demonstration because you can't even see what the clips are at this point. But if I were to export it, I'll show you that we'll see a significant time increase in terms of the final export. So I'll hit Command M, hit Match Sequence Settings, and then I'll hit Export again while timing it. Okay, so that export is now finished, and just to illustrate, that same 60 second export now took 3 minutes and 35 seconds to export. Now this won't be typical of your standard export time with effects, these are some really serious effects that obviously go way beyond what you would typically be doing to a clip, and I did it to illustrate how your export time can really go up with using effects and not with pre-rendering. Just to illustrate a point, I also did the same test with just the fast color corrector and the same export only took 22 seconds. So it can be very different depending on what effects you have in there. But this is why I'm going to suggest that people use this workflow of sometimes pre-rendering your sequence. Now a lot of people are probably thinking, why would I render in Premiere Pro? Premiere Pro does a really great job of real-time playback and I'll show you that even with this ton of effects on these clips, I'm able to play it back and I'm obviously not getting full resolution here, but I'm not on a system that's CUDA accelerated. And if I were to take it down to something like quarter res, I probably would be able to get real-time playback as you can see. 
The reason I suggest rendering though is because let's say you have to export this clip to a number of different formats. Sure, you could export a master sequence, but let's say the edit changes a bit or you have a little bit of downtime. So the same edit, if it were to tweak just an in and out point just by a frame or two, you'd have to re-export that same master file again. If everything was pre-rendered, it would be a nice quick export. And that's why I suggest you use the preview function with a high-res codec, something like Apple ProRes 422 or HQ, and start your previews in the background. The other great thing about this is you can do it while you're waiting on client comments, you could do it while you're eating lunch, when you're stepping out of the room, and it can save you a lot of time later at the end of the day when you have to deliver final files. So I'm gonna set this up to render, and while it might take about the same time as that final export, I'm able to do it once, and then every time I export again, I can use my preview files. So I'll set that off to go, and I'll show you the time difference it can really make in your final export. So I'm done rendering the sequence in the timeline, and it took about the same three and a half seconds as the final export did. The benefit is, of course, I could come in here and I could start playing full res without a problem. The other benefit is going to be my final export times. So let me show you that. If I hit Command M, and I'll do the same match sequence settings, but this time I'll check the checkbox that says use previews. And if I time that final export, I'll just hit export. It's just around nine seconds again. So it went from three and a half minutes to nine seconds. And that's three and a half minutes that you can be using while you're eating lunch, while you step out of the room, while you're doing anything else. And if the edit changes, I can trim this, I can delete the gap, I can do whatever I want. I could use the new ripple trim feature here and here. And instead of having to wait another two and a half, three and a half minutes for this to export, I could come up here, hit Command M, match sequence settings, and hit export. And you can see it's going to be done in a matter of seconds. And that was probably around five seconds right there. So using the previews is a huge time saver, and I highly recommend this workflow, especially to people doing any kind of long-form project.